Hey everybody, video here for you today. And what I'm going to do is try to steer you to a 45 minute documentary called A Point in Time. And this was done by the Bureau of Land Management here in Nevada. And I have talked about some history here in Nevada. Back a few years ago, I made a video on the Lovelock Caves and I have showed you some ancient history from nearby Red Rock Canyon here in Las Vegas. But this documentary goes over what was happening at the end of the last ice age people that were here and i found this to be very fascinating i'm just going to play about a five minute preview of this documentary just to give you a taste of it but it goes over ancient lakes that were here in nevada and this is a time period that i am trying to wrap my head around this is lost history with the greenland crater discovery and other good research the carolina bays and there's just one big huge mysterious story that is around the end of the last ice age that I am going to be making a few videos on. But I found this to be highly fascinating. I've always wondered about the geology in Nevada. What appeared to be ancient lakes? Are they million year old ancient seas? Some of them, and some of them very recent, huge lakes. A lot of us have listened to Randall Carlson and uh, Graham Hancock goes into this, the period from 14,000 years ago to 11,500 years ago appears that it was very cataclysmic on this earth but the earth has definitely changed i made a video the earth changed 12,000 years ago that people are watching a lot these days because this is a huge mystery we had huge lakes here in nevada that disappeared we have signs of human habitation that go back to the end of the ice age and this fits right in with my ancient america series where i looked at a whole bunch of periods of ancient lost history from the present day united states and this fits right in the story of ancient nevada and a totally different way this state looked and was at the end of the ice age huge massive lakes that are now dry desert but there is a huge mysterious story at the end of the ice age and little bits of evidence from different places we are now starting to put that story together but here's a preview of the documentary and i will leave the full link below hope you thought that was cool I've been pretty busy. I'm going to have a video coming out in the next days or so, a Q&A video where I'm going to go over a lot of good subjects. So look for that one. Hope you thought this was cool and you all have a very nice day. The Great Basin Desert. This is the largest desert in the United States. It covers a vast area of over 200,000 square miles. Almost all of it hot, dry, and seemingly empty of human activity. Until you look more closely. Hidden in the dust and sand, archaeologists are uncovering clues about some of the first inhabitants of North America, known as Paleo-Indians, who lived here more than 12,000 years ago. For more than a century, most North American archaeologists believe that the Clovis people, or the Clovis hunters, were the earliest hunter-gatherers in North America. We have found evidence of these Clovis points embedded between the ribs of now extinct megafauna, such as large bison, mammoth, mastodon, in the desert southwest of New Mexico and Arizona. But old theories are being replaced, and the Clovis may not have been alone in North America. In Nevada, we can paint a picture of an entirely separate Paleo-Indian culture that colonized the region. They're defined by their technology, and they had distinct projectile points and stone tools separate from the Clovis culture. Um, they probably spoke a different language and uh, had an entirely different culture altogether. Recent discoveries have dramatically shifted our knowledge of these early people and revealed surprising new details. This represents the earliest archaeology in the Great Basin. These people who use these points are the, the first real inhabitants of the Great Basin on any major way, first real residents. Journey back in time to the end of the last ice age before there was a desert. 
Join scientists as they use time-tested field surveys in tandem with high-tech mapping and computer modeling to uncover and rewrite this ancient story about the earliest inhabitants in one of the most remote parts of North America. The mountains were covered with forest and the valleys were filled with massive lakes. Driving across Nevada today, it's almost impossible to imagine what the landscape would have looked like as the Ice Age ended. I want to show you something amazing. I pulled off of Highway 50 near Sand Mountain Recreation Area to look at this mountain that you see behind me. If you look at the mountain from the bottom all the way to the top, you see these lines carved into the mountain. Those aren't railroads, they're not highways, those are wave cut terraces or ancient shorelines from a large and deep lake that once existed here. 17,000 years ago, the lake would have been all the way to the top of this mountain. From the air, you can clearly see how the waves of this ancient lake cut flat benches as they lapped ashore. Also, you can begin to understand the effects of climate change. Shortly after 17,000 years ago, the lake started evaporating due to warmer and drier climate, leaving behind a series of lower wave cut terraces as the lake level dropped. Throughout the Great Basin, you'll see evidence of these wave cut terraces like the ones on the mountainside behind me, evidence that this area of Nevada and the Great Basin was once teeming with ancient deep lakes. So just to get it straight, 17,000 years ago, standing where we are right now, we would have been approximately 400 feet underwater. During the Ice Age, there were extraordinary animals that roamed the landscape, animals on a scale much larger than those that are found today in North America. This group of big game was collectively known as megafauna. Here in Nevada and the Great Basin, the megafauna included a wide diversity of animals. They included herbivores or grazers such as mammoth, giant bison, llamas, giant camels. And some predators who would have hunted them. These interesting predators included giant short-faced bears, dire wolves larger than modern gray wolves, and even uh, a critter that we call the North American cheetah. 